Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. I have another Monday quarterback video for you. This comes from Hillsdale County, Michigan in the Reading Township. Um, this video comes from Police Overwatch on YouTube. If you have not already, head on over to Police Overwatch on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. They have lots of good content and a lot of good educational videos. This incident, a deputy with the Hillsdale County Sheriff's Office in Michigan responded to a call about a loose, vicious dog. Uh, the deputy made contact at a residence and the dog came out of the residence, attacked the deputy, bit him, and the deputy was forced to have to shoot the dog. The owner came out, was very upset about the dog being shot, pulled a knife out, and then came at the deputy, and the deputy was forced to have to shoot the dog owner in self-defense. Um, since this video is a little bit longer than some of the other videos I've done, normally what I've done is I'll play the video in its entirety and then I'll go back and pause at various points and talk about things. What I'm going to do is as this video is playing, I will just pause at different points and talk about things that I think were done right and things that I think were done wrong. And I might rewind, uh, certain points just to, uh, do a, a quick playback. To, to reiterate um, talking points and things like that. Uh, without further ado, here we go. So right off the bat, um, I don't know what body camera this deputy is using. Uh, it's obviously not an, an Axon brand. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but the quality of it isn't all that great. Now, it could either be the camera quality is not that great, or it could be that this is a copied video of a copied video. And I have seen that in a few different places where um, someone will do a screen recording of an initial press release type of thing um, or it will be at a press release where it's being played on a screen and someone's recording it with a camera or a phone or something like that and the quality doesn't look all that great so I'm not I'm not 100% sure which one this is if it's just a crappy camera or if it's just a copy of a copy Howdy. All right, so I'm going I'm to replay this part because that happened really quick.
Howdy. Mm. So, right off the bat, <clears throat> as a dog, as a dog owner myself, um, I don't understand why this guy opened the door the way that he did, knowing that when he opened this door, the dog had to have been obviously right there with him. And why he decided to open the door so fully like that to allow that dog to easily come out of the door, I don't, I don't understand. I don't know, you know, what this guy's mindset was. Obviously, um, we'll never know what his mindset was because he's dead now. But, you know, there's only really a, a couple guesses that could be, you know, gleaned from this. Either A, this guy, you know, intentionally open the door like that so the dog will come out and intimidate uh the deputy or scare him or whatever or this guy was uh, he's just aloof and and just obviously not a good thinker and just whip the door all wide open like that and um the dog obviously you know had nothing impeding it to be able to just run out um I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, it's just like, I just don't get it. Um, you know, as a dog owner and, you know, having a dog that, you know, you open that door, you know, they're, they're, they're tails wagging. They're wanting to go outside. Um, you know, depending on your dog too, if you can call them and they can come back, you know, each person knows their dog, uh, better than anyone else. And, you know, this guy, you know, he may have multiple times in the past been able to call his dog right then and there and the dog come right back up the stairs. I have no idea. Uh, but I have never thought it'd be a wise idea when I have my dog inside the house and I'm going to answer the door to just fully open the door in such a manner that the dog can just easily run out. Uh, he could have obviously cracked the door um, and had just enough of the crack to... Uh, be able to talk to whoever's outside and prevent the dog from just easily running out the door. Um, and he very well could have taken the dog uh, inside the house and put it in a different room somewhere. Or he could have opened the door and had his hand on the dog's collar holding him. For whatever reason, this guy didn't do any other options like this. He just opened the door wide open and this dog was able to come out unimpeded and come at the deputy so we can see the dog coming out down the stairs and just instantaneously the dog is growling and, and biting at the deputy the owner uh, is obviously now running out um, trying to I would imagine trying to control the dog so the deputy was forced to have to shoot the dog. The dog's still standing at this point, um, and the dog runs away. You get on the ground right now. And then the dog finally runs over to its final resting place, and then falls down and expires. Uh, the deputy at this point has uh, got the, the mail at presumably gunpoint and is ordering him uh, to get down. Dog. Bit me, dude. Right. This shot's fired, dog bit. Yeah, ambulance out here, supervisor please. Just stay right the f there. Why am I? So, his left hand, when he was pointing at him, he has something in it. And it's always difficult to pause it at the right moment. But this does appear to be a can of pepper spray. It's hard to tell what brand Just stay or right anything that it is. But you can see it, it looks to me like a classic um, can of OC. And it's, I have no idea if he, he tried to use that first and it had no effect 
um, or he was trying it and he was getting bit and he decided to go ahead and go to gun. There's not a whole lot of information that's being released about this case. Of course, you know, this did occur in April of 2021 and it is now July 1st of 2021. Uh, this video didn't come out until um, last month sometime and the family and their attorneys have been fighting for it to be released. Uh, they were given a private viewing of the video and then it finally made it out into the public. And of course, in these kind of incidents, um, agencies don't really release all the information at once because everything's still in court. So the details just aren't, are not there. So I don't know if he tried to use pepper spray first, it was ineffective, or he had the mindset to get it out and try to use it and then abandoned the idea and went to gun. Um, either way, um, it would appear as though possibly if that was the case, then he was holding OC in one hand and shooting a gun with the other hand. Um, we all know that two-handed shooting is better. Uh, you know, if, he, if that was the case and he decided to go to gun, uh, he should have just dropped the can of OC there and went to a two-handed firing position to deal with it. Obviously, you know, if that was the case, um, him holding the OC and then pulling the gun, he obviously did good enough to shoot the dog at close range uh, while holding the OC in one hand and the gun in the other. But me personally, uh, if you decide to go to gun, you need to clear your support hand of anything that's in it and ditch it because it's not going to do you any good and it's just it's going to impede your ability to get a good two-handed firing grip. And this is something that I see um, I don't want to say often, but it's something I've, I've seen enough times, uh, that it is something I've noticed that people do. Uh, sometimes you'll see, uh, officers holding a flashlight in their left hand. Um, one of the videos that I've done recently, um, uh, for, um, it was an incident in, uh, Los Angeles. There's an officer during the daytime with a flashlight in his hand, and he's trying to get a two-handed grip holding that flashlight. It doesn't work. So when you do your training and your practice, um, I would recommend um, having something in your support hand and going through the motions of ditching whatever is in that support hand, getting rid of it and going to a two handed grip. Now, it's also possible that he did fire. And then now, uh, because he's dealing with a person who who doesn't have a shirt on and doesn't appear to be armed, uh, but is obviously very agitated maybe he's decided to go ahead and pull his pepper spray can out in anticipation of this guy going nuts over a dead dog and him having to potentially pepper spray him. That's also another possibility. But like I said, um, it's too soon after the incident to know because all the details have not been released from the agency. Moving on. There. Why am I... Shots fired. Shots fired. There's a dog bite. You need an ambulance down here and the supervisor. They shot my dog, bro. Dude, your dog bit me. That's why it got shot. Okay? Yes, you do. No, stay on the ground. Stay on the ground. Did you me? No, get back. Did you shoot me? Back up! Okay? That's the unit eight. Stop right there. Sir, you need to stop right there. Yeah, Just stay right here. Give us a piece. Just stay right there. I'm not gonna stay right there. You fing shoot me. I'm not gonna shoot me. No. Shoot me. Stop right there. Stop right there. You're going to get tased. So, <clears throat> obviously the guy is very irate. And I would be upset too if, if my if my little furry best friend had gotten killed. But um, 
you know, he charges at the officer. This is the second time he's approached the officer in an aggressive and hostile manner. Uh, the officer's already pointed uh, an OC can at him, and now he's having to point his taser at him as well. You up. Every single ass head. Well, your dog bit me, and that's why I got shot. Now, this agency is obviously using um, a uh, video um, editing software to put a little blurry thing over the dead dog. Um, not something I've, I'm used to seeing. Usually they put them over humans. Um, and as grainy as this video is, I don't even know if it's actually fully necessary to, to blur the dog. It's not like you're seeing anything grotesque or anything. But uh, yeah, each agency is different on how they do their uh, press releases and and what they do with their open record stuff as far as what they blur and what they don't blur. I just I thought it was odd that they blurred the dog out. Down the ground right now. Stop the. I've called for medical, they're on their way. Try to calm down for me, sir. Do not come near me, you stay right there. We're all having a bad day. The state boys already shot my other dog. Well, maybe you are keep your dogs under control. Sorry about what's happened here. I didn't want this. Try to calm down for me, sir. Alright, so I'm going to hit replay on this. So, listen to what he's talking about. I hit replay. Call the ambulance! I've called for medical. They're on their way. Try to calm down for me, sir. Do not come near me. You stay right there. We're all having a bad the day. The boys already. Shot my other dog. Well, maybe he said the state boys have already shot my other dog. So this is obviously not the first um, uh, rodeo, so to speak, for this guy. Um, I don't know what the other incident that he's referring to is. I don't have any details on that. Um, it could have been something. I wouldn't say very similar to this, but it could have been another incident where he just had a loose, out-of-control dog that forced the state the state boys. I don't know if it's their state police or what, but it forced. Sounds like he's had another dog uh, similar to this that's had to force someone else to to use uh, force on it. You uh, keep your dogs under control. So I'll hit that that one more time. Try to calm down for me, sir. Do not come near me. You stay right there. We're all having a bad the day. The state boys already <laughs> shot my other dog. Well, maybe you uh, keep your dogs under control. <laughs> Sorry about what's happened here. I didn't want this, okay? I didn't make up this thing. <laughs> shut. Yeah, I am aware of what I did. Look at him. Look at him. He's <laughs> Stop. I'm in the dark his own Hey, no, no. We want to finish. You stay right there. Why, why, why did you get called? Got called because your dog's running at large. And your dog attacked me. Why did you get called here? Because your dog's running free and it's not contained on your property. I just wanted to talk to you about that. Didn't want anything exciting going on. You killed my dog, bro. Well, I'm sorry about that. 13 years old. 13 years old. Thank you. Well, sorry about what happened. And, and, and my, my last baby girl that the Stadies cop, she was 11. So you killed my best friend. You killed my best friend. You killed my best enough for one day. You can go ahead with the fight. So we can hear this guy talking, and I don't know if it's just if it's just his extreme emotional state that is causing him to talk the way he's talking. 
There's a there's a few times where it almost sounds like he has some slightly slurred speech. So I don't know if that's a um, an issue that's caused by some type of substance or if he has some type of speech impediment or if he's just in a, such extreme emotional state that his voice kind of sounds like that. Uh, but he does mention again about the Stadies uh, killing his other dog. Now, that other incident, this incident, um, the way this guy, you know, he's acting and, and all that, and his appearances, um, me, my first guess, my first um, thoughts on this guy is this is probably not a guy that makes very good decisions in life. Um, probably a more um, quick, um, impulsive kind of person who uh, doesn't put a whole lot of thought uh, into things. The officer did try uh, some de-escalation, explaining to him that, you know, why he was there and all he was wanting to do was talk to him about it. Uh, he didn't want, obviously, anything to be going on. Uh, as this guy has been um, escalating things, of course, the verbal judo on the officer's part, um, you know, it can only go so far. So obviously the officer has to um, raise his voice and um, have that appearance of, of becoming aggressive, so to speak, to keep this person in control and prevent them from coming at him. Now, obviously, at some point, um, that comes to an end and this guy's no longer, um, intimidated by the deputy and he does choose to pull a knife and come at the deputy. And we'll see that here in a little bit. Wait, no, do not do that. So put that down. Put that down right now. So that happened very fast. Um, who knows what was going through the guy's mind as he was standing over there by his dead dog. Um, he obviously was standing there long enough to have enough time and silence to himself to run whatever thoughts were going through his head. Um, could the deputy have um, talked to him some more and, and, and maybe kept him from having those thoughts? Possibly. Um, it could have, um, maybe prevented this guy from having those thoughts, or it could have just realistically just delayed, um, this guy having those thoughts and he still would have had them anyway. Going ahead and hit the, hit the replay on this and go back and we'll see, uh, this incident one more time. So he reached out, it's very hard to see, and but he reached out, he's got the knife now into his uh, right hand. The officer uh, does a transition where he takes the taser out of his dominant hand and then he of course takes a firearm into his dominant hand. And that's always an important thing um, when it comes to uh, responding to lethal threats. Um, the only time that you ever hold a taser in your hand against a person who has a deadly physical weapon is when your backing unit has a deadly physical weapon out. If you're by yourself, you do not, um, if you're by yourself and the person has a deadly physical weapon, you do not keep that taser in your hand because tasers are known to fail. They do not always work. And at this close distance, very, very close distance, uh, this guy charging at him, if the taser was deployed and it failed, uh, this guy could keep charging at the officer and be able to 
close that distance very quickly and start stabbing, slashing, and causing serious physical injury or even death to the deputy before he would be able to get that gun out of the holster and put effective incapacitating rounds into the target. So he made a good, quick transition um, from a less lethal weapon to a deadly weapon when he noticed this guy pulled out a deadly physical weapon and then started coming towards him in a aggressive and hostile manner. So he he started to lunge forward. He shifted his weight and started coming at the officer, and the officer started shooting. Uh, obviously, the officer still has that taser in his left hand and is firing one-handed with his pistol. Again, this could have been another instance um, where he could have just ditched what was in his support hand throw it, toss it, whatever, and go to a more uh, better two-handed firing grip. But uh, with that being said, it's obvious um, in this case that his one-handed firing grip worked and he was able to put effective incapacitating rounds on target. Now, <clears throat> what I will note also is after he fired at the dog, he fired, I don't know how many rounds he fired at the dog, but he fired a few for sure. And now he's fired a few at this guy. Um, who knows how many rounds he has left in his gun. Uh, I personally um, would have liked to have seen him do a reload after this shooting. Um, it would have been great if he could have done it after shooting the dog, um, but definitely after being engaged in a deadly physical encounter with a person, um, there should, after firing a few rounds, there should be a reload in there somewhere, um, after that shooting, because you have no idea who else is in the house, you know, if the, if those rounds are going to keep that person down or not. Sometimes people can get back up and, and get back in the fight. And only having two rounds in a magazine and being forced to do an emergency reload on slide lock, uh, that sucks. So it would have been better if you could have done a reload right after the fact, get a fresh mag in that gun, and then that gun be uh, at full capacity. And if something else were to happen, he now has a full complementary of 15 rounds, 17 rounds, whatever, versus maybe just two, and then go in the slide lock. So I would have liked to have seen a reload after this shooting, but it doesn't happen. Additional shots fired, one suspect down. The additional units here, right away, please. And of course, it's hard to see when the agency does the editing but he's he's laying right there he's just blurred out so you can see a little bit of him laying right here and then you can see the dog laying over there Now, he does have the mindset at this point to go ahead and do a reload. So, that's a good one on him. He recognized the fact that, hey, I just fired some rounds. I've been in a fight. There is a potential that, you know, there's always potential, you know, you may have to fight some more. He does that reload. Now, if I play a little bit longer and pause, ah, I waited too long. This guy does have a red dot on his pistol. And again, I just want to note that that is something I'm starting to notice a little bit more 
in these body cam videos is the emergence of red dots on duty weapons. And again, haven't done any videos on red dots. I do plan to do some videos in the future, just have not done so thus far. Go ahead and hit that, see that reload one more time. So that was a pretty good reload right there. Uh, pretty quick, simple. And now he's got a fresh mag in the gun um, ready to deal with any other threats that may uh, emerge. There could be someone else in the house that comes out or this guy could get back up and start coming at him again. Who knows? We can't see the guy very well because his body's been blurred over. Just went past it. We're just north of the old Richards RV. We're good. What happened? Careful, careful, he's got a knife. Right. Stay back here, let me throw both. He's got a knife underneath him. So we'll hit this replay. We'll, we'll rewatch this segment here. So the backing is the there. He's got, a knife He's got his him. long gun out. And one of the uh, EMS personnel, I don't know if she's an EMT or a medic, whatever. Uh, she has obviously um, left the, the truck and has gone very close up to the scene. Um, and you'll hear her partner back here get on to her. Was, hit play and, and rewatch this. So scene safety. Um, doesn't matter what um, public safety entity role that you're involved in, scene safety is always of importance and um, her partner had recognized the fact that uh, the scene was not safe yet and, and she was too close to what was going on and she needed to back the hell out of there um, for EMS fire rescue whatever um, going to scenes that's involved shootings and whatnot uh, a lot of times the trucks do not pull up 
to the scene until police have said, hey, the scene is safe. Uh, typically, you'll see um, ambulances and fire trucks, whatnot, stopping a distance away from the scene and, and staging until it's known to them or told to them that the scene is safe for them to approach. Um, who knows uh, what their EMS dispatcher had told them. Um, they may have been led to believe that the scene was safe and it was okay for them to pull up and park right there in front of everything. Um, but they got there. Obviously, the scene was not fully rendered safe. And good on the guy for recognizing the fact that, uh, hey, it's not fully clear yet. Hey, partner, get the hell back. Let's go ahead and resume with the video. And it's extremely difficult to see what's going on with the big blur boxes on there. Um, all you can see is maybe someone standing right there. You can't even really see the guy laying down anymore. So we really, I really have no idea fully what this guy's doing. Maybe he's kicking the knife further away from the guy. I really have no idea uh, what he's doing because you just you cannot see what he's doing. All you, all we know that he's circling the body at this point. Yeah. So he said he's not moving. Um, and it could be that, um, obviously, from his point of view, his perspective, he could see um, what could be to him obvious signs of death. Um, he may be saw enough to know that this guy's not getting back up because obviously they never did cuff the guy and he just walked fully away from him with his back turned to him and let the medic medics uh, go over to him. So but we won't, I won't know in this right now, uh, maybe, you know, later on, you know, next year, if I see something else about this case, we'll fully know then. But uh, right now, who knows, um, who knows what he saw. Um, but he obviously saw enough to know that this guy's, he's not getting back in the fight. Yeah, I'm all right. You sure? Yeah. Yeah. No. Want to drink water or something? Yeah, that'd be all right. You got yeah. some. And then now, both of these officers uh, are going to walk very far away from where they're at, leaving the medics alone with this guy and go over uh, to a vehicle over here. So again, like I said... They, we can't see anything because of all the blur boxes on there, but it's pretty good guess that uh, from what they could see, it was pretty obvious this guy's not going to be getting back up. Now, you know, when you're thirsty, you're thirsty, but I'm just going to say, <laughs> I don't know about drinking from a bottle from another person. Uh, maybe they worked together long enough. He knows him, he, you know, whatever. I don't know. I'm, I'm probably going to be less likely to drink from a bottle that some other dude's been drinking from. Got a pulse. Yeah. It sounded like he said they got a pulse.
I believe he's on his way. Um, I'm just going to put this by the tree. Okay. And then I removed it. All right, I'll make a note. You want to come sit in my car? So I believe that they were talking about the knife, that they've retrieved it and they're putting it by this tree. Um, not 100% not 100% sure what they're talking about because they do end up muting a lot of um, segments of this video. Um, I don't know obviously what they're muting out. Um, I think they're muting out names of officers uh, because they do take for some reason great lengths at blurring out the officer's uh, face, the backing officer, and uh, other people there, and they're muting some parts of the some parts of the video. What exactly they're muting, I have no idea, but I suspect that it's names and maybe some other, um, what they would deem as sensitive information. Um, yeah, I'll just hang out over by something. There are responding units to Reading Township can come through Richards Army. Yeah, he's probably going to want to know about it, so that probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Over there, medical. You're all good. I'm good. Did you get bit? I did. Uh, yeah, I imagine. Started this whole thing. Well, not really, but. So I'm, we're familiar with this house. What's happening? Dog at large. Went over to speak with the dog owner, opened the door. Dog comes out, tags me, try to pepper spray, it's not responsive, dog bites me, shoot the dog, dog owner becomes upset, trying to calm him down, he's getting aggressive, he's kind of lunging at me. So he does address the pepper spray part. <clears throat> so I mentioned earlier I wasn't really sure what he had, had done with the pepper spray. So he does talk about that he did try to use the pepper spray and it was ineffective um, and that he had to use uh, lethal force against it. Me. Eventually, he pulls the knife out of his pocket and runs towards me. I 
shoot him and he falls down. First time. Okay. So, Stover came, double checked him, he was unresponsive, found the knife underneath him. It's in a black glove at the base of one of those two trees over there. You have it on camp? Yeah. Black glove at the base of one of those. Double checked him, he was unresponsive, found the knife underneath him. It's in a black glove at the base. So, Stover. All right. So, they go through just, just something I picked up. So they go through great lengths of blurring out the officers' faces. Um, but it sounds like he says the other officer's name, um, and they don't mute it out. Okay. So, Stover came, double-checked him, he was unresponsive. Sound like Stobert. Um, you know, after reviewing so many different videos, um, it's... I don't know. I don't know how to say it. It's it's amusing sometimes when these records people go through these great lengths of blurring things out and hiding things, um, and then they completely forget to mute out uh, the guy's name. So they go through this trouble of uh, blurring his face. You can't see who he is, but then they let his name slip. Just just another just a little interesting observation. Um, from this video and some others that I've seen. Found the knife underneath him. It's in a black glove at the base of one of those two trees over there. You have it on cam? Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Did this all occur up the front? Uh, yeah, it started up there. There's it's that little chunk section of gate right around fence right there. Yeah. Around the corner there's the main entrance to the house. Right. Scuffle started with the dog right there shot dog ran out it's just past medical there okay and then he goes out to it and then it all goes downhill from there gotcha so mm -hmm. many rounds you know don't know yeah so when, when i heard that go out i knew a dog owner was probably going to have an issue so i started calling that here anyway but central <laughs> Is he a younger white guy? Must be Hispanic. Uh, possibly a lot of tattoos. Yeah, he's the same guy then. Yeah, I never even got to his name. The dog came out. Since the door opened, the dog came out and it went all to hell from there. Where is he? Everything's just done over there. It all happened over there. Yeah, it's one of those still Yeah, still there. Yeah. yeah, he came out and checked the guy. Unresponsive. I guess they had a pulse on him, so they're trying to do whatever they can for him. Gotcha. Much better, man. Yeah. So that concludes the video from Hillsdale um, County, Michigan, and not much uh, to say uh, any more about this video than what I've already said during the video. Um, it's it sucks, um, but you know, I personally, in, in the way a lot of these videos that I've done so far. Um, it really is the other party that brings this about. Um, of course, you know, with this anti-police 
uh, narrative that is going on here in the year of 2021 and has been going coming on since year 2020 and maybe a little bit before that. Uh, everyone's all about, you know, talking shit and, and making things up and saying the police are just trigger, trigger happy and, and wanting to kill people. But when you really watch the videos, it's obvious that's that's not the case at all. And it's these these other people who who bring this these unfortunate things upon themselves. Um, you know, starting right off the bat, you know, this guy did not control his dog or his dogs for that matter, because he alluded to the fact that he had another dog, uh, shot by the police. So, uh, this guy, like I said earlier, I don't, I personally, uh, don't think that he's, he was the type of person to make good decisions in life, probably very impulsive person, um, and just maybe not the brightest, um, why he opened his door the way he did, knowing that the dog could very easily go out the door. Who knows? Who knows what his mindset was at that point? But obviously, uh, he did it wrong by doing that. Um, he should have either A, kept his hand on the dog's collar to keep it from just running out and attacking. Or he could have put the dog in another room and closed the door and then talked to the uh, officer that way. And... Uh, you know, it doesn't matter who's coming at your door. Uh, it could be the UPS man. It could be FedEx. It could be um, some kids, you know, wanting to sell, um, you know, Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts wanting to sell cookies or popcorn. Or it could be some uh, nonprofit person coming around wanting a donation. It could be some religious group wanting to come by just wanting to pray for you. Um, it doesn't matter who's coming to the door uh, as a dog owner. Um you know, if you know you got a dog that's going to most likely run out the door, you should take those steps to prevent that dog from being able to do that, i.e. putting them in a room and closing the door or holding on to their collar so that they can't do it or crack the door just enough to where they can't force their body through that door and you can still talk and carry on a conversation through that door with whoever it is. Um... You know, the, the thing happened, you know, the dog came out, attacked the deputy, uh, and then the guy got extremely upset, as I think any normal dog owner would. Uh, I know I would be extremely upset if my my little fur buddy um, was shot, but uh, this guy, he escalated it, he pulled a knife out, and he came at that deputy. Um, that was on him. He decided to... To, to do that, he decided to, to turn this situation into a deadly force encounter, um, and he got shot as a consequence. It's all on him. The deputy didn't do anything wrong, in my opinion. He was there um, legally. He was performing his duties. Um, nothing, nothing wrong on the deputy's part, in my opinion. Um, this guy, this, uh, I forget his name, I think it's Oscara. Um, something Oscar Herrera, I believe his name is. Let me take a real quick look. Yes, Oscar Herrera is the guy's name. Uh, he brought this upon himself. No one else is to blame except for him. The deputy did everything legally. Um, um, I can only assume that, uh, you know, his, that state's use of force laws, um, probably pretty similar to other states. I, I don't know Michigan's use of force laws, but I'm uh, pretty confident that, uh, you know, he didn't break any of those laws. And from a constitutional standpoint, he did not deprive this guy of any of his constitutional rights or anything like that. Everything was legal, as is the majority, 99.9% uh, .9 of all these shootings that you see on body cam footage or dash cam footage, whatever. Um, that's that's the cold hard truth of the matter is 99.9 percent .9 of them are always going to be uh, justified and it's the other party who does stupid shit and brings it upon brings these misfortunes upon themselves. That's it. That's all I got to say about this. If you like the Monday quarterback series and you like this video, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you have not already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any other Monday quarterback videos. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense, thank you for watching.